Polaris Dawn, when is it going to launch? Well, it's currently still in a holding pattern due to weather. This private space mission is extremely ambitious and there are a lot of people in Florida right now that are still trying to stay in town so they can witness this amazing launch. Unfortunately, it's been delayed twice already. The first delay was due to a groundside helium leak and the second one was due to weather mostly impacting the return profile. Well, a lot of people on X are officially reporting Friday as the new launch date, but Jared Isaacman, the billionaire and SpaceX astronaut who is funding the flight, says otherwise. So here's where some of the confusion is happening. Someone wrote on X, where is the best place to get updates on the Polaris Dawn launch? Third party sites post dates, but SpaceX and Kennedy are silent. West Chew out of Orlando reported September 4th, but I can't find any confirmation. I want to drive down and see wherever it happens. Jared responded, people jump on no TAMs that are filed, but really that is about preserving the option should the weather cooperate. He said he recommends following SpaceX and the Polaris program accounts for official updates, which they are still waiting on the good weather window. So, so if the weather is cooperative, according to the FAA's current operation, plan, the Polaris Dawn mission could be launched Friday, September 6th at 3.33 a.m. Eastern Time from Kennedy Space Center with a backup launch opportunity on Saturday and on Sunday. But here's some frequently asked questions that Jared also responded to, and I thought you guys might be curious to hear the answers. So when will the EVA be or the private spacewalk, the first ever commercial spacewalk? Jared says that they will launch that on day three and the exact time will be determined when they get up there. He says there will be frequent updates from the Polaris program channel, including daily briefs. Interesting that they'll do daily briefs and we've only heard from Butch and Sonny, what, once up at the ISS? Just a different way of doing business. And check out this amazing rendering that SpaceX posted a few days ago. Dragon, SpaceX, successfully checks. Dragon has initiated cabin venting. Venting complete. Stand by for GMC config and hatch open. Dragon, SpaceX. SpaceX is go for EVA operations. Jared wrote, this is a little preview of what to expect during our spacewalk from Dragon. Hopefully we'll make it look as good as this SpaceX rendering. I also asked Jared a question which many of us have, how much of the spacewalk will be live streamed for us here on the ground, if any? And Jared said, we are hopeful most of it if the comm coverage holds up. Now remember, they're going to be testing Starlink communications in space for the first time as well. And so that will be just incredible if we can live vicariously through this crew and see uh, what a spacewalk would feel like. And for the record, Jared Isaacman, I've met him in person. I also interviewed him after the Starship launch four back in June. He is truly so down to earth and kind down to earth for being a, an astronaut, you know, but a lot of people went to Florida to try and see the launch in person. Uh, it has slipped, you know, a few times now it was supposed to be last month. And this poor man flew all the way from Italy saying such a shame to miss the Polaris Dawn launch after coming all the way from Italy and heading back on September 5th. But seeing Jared's suit and the Falcon 9 booster up close at the Kennedy Space Center was incredible, an unforgettable experience. And Jared took the time to respond saying, thanks for making the trip. Sorry, it did not work out. Safe trip home. Good news is that SpaceX has a hell of a live stream, which if you've watched any of the Starship launches, you would know that that is correct. But I just think it's really nice of Jared to take the time and, you know, try and apologize to people for things that are out of his control, like Mother Nature. So anyway, what are they doing in the meantime? Well, they are staying busy, still in quarantine with some formation flying. 
They have a timeline review, staying fit, and focused on the mission ahead. He writes, they're grateful for the amazing team and this incredible opportunity, and the big launch day is getting closer. And as a bonus, if you were wondering if there will be a documentary for this, like there was for Inspiration4, yes, it's in the works. I still can't believe that you guys helped me earn this amazing YouTube plaque for 100,000 subscribers. In fact, my channel continues to grow with over 120,000 since the Elon Musk interview on the day of the Starship launch, which is mind blowing. It's great to have so much exposure for my channel. However, it's important to keep my information safe since more people are looking me up, trying to get information like maybe my phone number, email, or address. That's why I've been working with Delete Me since February and they've been able to scrub a lot of my personal data off the internet. Since February, Delete Me has reviewed almost 10,000 listings. So I recently logged into my Delete Me account and I see this breakdown of my exposed data. And Unfortunately, my address was apparently what was exposed the most, so we're getting that taken care of. But it can take some time to remove the listings and new ones seem to always pop up. So let's talk about what Delete Me does. Delete Me submits removals from the data brokers which they find my information. The privacy report shows each of the data brokers they've scanned, what they found, and what they're doing to remove my data. After they've submitted each opt-out, their privacy advisors go back and check each source again to make sure my information has actually been been removed. But these things take time. Slower data brokers can take weeks to honor requests, which is why Delete Me continues to check up on it. And keep in mind, even after removals are completed, Google can take additional time to remove results from its search cache. Delete Me is always scanning for new data brokers, which will be added to the list as they appear. And then they will also submit opt-out removals for personal information to the new listings. This is why a membership is so beneficial. Delete Me can keep scanning and seeing if there are new listings continuing to follow up for you throughout the year. You might also wanna consider a family plan. A lot of your relatives are linked to you. And in my chart, that was the second most exposed piece of information. I personally trust Delete Me and I feel much more secure knowing that my personal info isn't out there to be subject to threats of harassment, identity theft, and even stalking. You can get 20% off Delete Me US consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com slash LE20 and use promo code LE20 at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash LE20 code LE20. Now, by the way, some of you have asked me if I'm gonna be there in person. Well, part of the problem is that we still don't have an official launch date. And because these things slip, and I'm at a conference this week in Dallas for uh, YouTube creators. I'm not gonna be making the Polaris Dawn launch in person, but oh, I really wish that I could be there. I missed the deadline to get the press credentials and um, it, just, it just is not gonna work. But of course, you can expect me to do a recap if I'm not able to live stream it, which I should be able to live stream it. So hopefully you're able to join me for that. By the way, I'd be remiss not to keep you apprised of the latest Starliner developments. So here we go. I'm a little bit late to the party on this one. This news broke over the weekend. And as you know, Starliner is a super hot topic right now. So any little tidbit of information is going to go viral. But apparently Butch Wilmore, uh, there's audio of him saying, hey, there's a, there's a weird sound coming from Starliner. So what's going on here? Houston on two, I've got a question about Starliner. Houston's with you, Butch, go ahead. Uh, There's it's a strange noise coming through the speaker. And I didn't know if you could connect into the Starliner and let me uh, keep mic and let you hear. I don't, I don't know what, what's making it, but uh, I don't know if it's something that maybe is connected uh, between here and there, making that happen. But uh, anyway, can you do that? We can configure that, Butch. Give us a minute, and I'll call you back when it's ready. Okay. Station Houston on two. We're configured for audio via Hardline and CST, if you want to give us a call. Okay, I'm in uh, Starliner, and how do you read? Five by five, how many? Okay, I'm going to keep the mic up next to the speaker. Copy. Hear that? At negative, Butch, we did not hear anything. That. All right, Butch, that one came through. It was kind of like a pulsing noise, almost like a sonar ping. Yeah, I'll do it one more time, and I'll scratch your head to see if you can figure out what's going on. Here we go. Over to you. Tell us 
uh, to figure it out. Yep, good recording. Thanks, Butch. We will pass it on to the team and let you know what we find. And Butch, just to be make sure I'm on the same page, this is emanating from the speaker in Starliner. You don't notice anything else, uh, any other noises, any other weird configs in there? Okay, thank you. And NASA commercial crew cleared this up, writing, quote, a pulsing sound from a speaker in Boeing Starliner spacecraft Heard by NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore aboard the International Space Station has stopped. The feedback from the speaker was the result of an audio configuration between the space station and Starliner. The space station audio system is complex, allowing multiple spacecraft and modules to be interconnected, and it is common to experience noise and feedback. The crew was asked to contact Mission Control when they hear sounds originating in the comm system. The speaker feedback Wilmore reported has no technical impact to the crew, Starliner, or station operations, including Starliner's uncrewed undocking from the station no earlier than Friday, September 6th. So this could end up being really interesting. We could have the Polaris Dawn launch early Friday, and then later in the evening Friday, we could have Starliner's uncrewed undocking finally happen. Only, you know, months behind behind schedule. And just another um, interesting little video clip that I saw, Butch's daughter posted this uh, little clip on TikTok, and it has millions of views. She basically says, you know, she's sad that her dad is stuck in space. He's not dead, but um, he's just stuck in space. And so I guess you have it confirmed. At the beginning of my Starliner reporting, I had a lot of criticism from people saying, how dare you say they're stranded or they're stuck? And, well, if the family is now considering it stuck in space, um, I think it's fair to say they're stuck in space. And if you're still watching this video, you probably don't mind seeing a few more interesting clips. Check out this incredible video of Starlink in Antarctica. Apparently, Starlink is keeping a U.S. research team connected at Antarctica's remote Allen Hills, where they're extracting ice cores over 2 million years old, even with 30 knot winds. Uh, yeah. Incredible video, Starlink is working under the most extreme circumstances, and now it's going to be tested in space for the first time, Uh, so that will be really cool, and hopefully it holds up well, because I really want to see the live stream of the spacewalk. And just another tidbit of interesting information that I'm sure if you watch this channel, you'd be interested in. After many years, the Starhopper has moved to a new home at Starbase. So check out this amazing video from Anthony Gomez. Uh, Really cool to see things move up close if you're there in person on the crawler. They are much larger than these videos can even do it justice. Not exactly sure why SpaceX moved Starhopper to a new location, but apparently it was just moved from the launch site to a parking lot at Starbase, so probably has to do with, I don't know, uh, more Starship tests incoming and an increasing launch cadence, question mark? Anyway, I was lucky enough to tour Starbase on the inside. Of course, they didn't let me take any video, but I did get to stand underneath Hopper, and uh, it's, it's, it's much bigger, like I said, than these videos do it justice. But once again, another reason that I'm really looking forward to going down to Starbase soon because ugh, there's just so much changing there all the time, and... Um, I really hope that we learn when the Starship launch is. I've had a lot of people ask me, look, we don't have a confirmed date yet. It's looking more and more like late September. And so I will keep my my eyes and ears open. But uh, as of now, there is no set launch date for the next Starship launch. So, so we're just going to have to be patient, but I want to thank everyone who ordered a Mechazilla shirt. Those are going out very soon, and I just can't believe all of the love and support I have on this channel. It's crazy to me that this is my full-time job, so thank you to everyone who watches Ellie in Space. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.